Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on biofilms and your health, especially your thyroid. We're gonna go into what biofilms are, how they make it very difficult for us to get rid of bad bacteria that's creating problems in your gut, and also how it affects your thyroid and solutions we can do to help fix it for good. All right, so let's dig in. What are biofilms first? Well, biofilms are made out of these things called EPS, extracellular polymetric substance. What the heck does that mean? All it is is nucleic acids, some um, complex sugars, and some proteins all stuck together. And this biofilm makes a protective force field, so to speak, over the bacteria. So we have these bacteria called planktonic bacteria. All right, so essentially we're not talking about planktonic bacteria. Planktonic bacteria are the kind of bacteria that antibiotics um, kill. Biofilms rest on top of planktonic bacteria, and it's like that protective force field, if you will. So when we look at biofilms, they are like the force field. So if you watch that movie 300, where they have all these uh, Roman Greek soldiers, so to speak, um, well, what happens in that movie, they have their spear, and then they have their shield, right? And the whole goal is they use their shield to protect them, and then they come in there and jab with the spear. So think of the shield is like what the biofilm does for the bacteria. It protects it from invaders. And here's the thing, things like antibiotics have a very difficult time even knocking down biofilms. That's part of the reason why we have this antibiotic resistance. Yes, the medicines aren't working, but also the biofilms are a big reason why these antibiotics aren't working. And we have natural strategies to help fix it. So again, what are biofilms? It's that protective membrane. So just think about it too with your teeth. Ever get that kind of slimy coating over your teeth or you wake up in the morning and you kind of feel slick, like you got sweaters on your teeth? That's a biofilm. Now we have these all in our certain bacteria in the gut, especially the bad ones, the gram-negative and gram-positive uh, dysbiotic are bad ones. So we want to take that coating off. It's like you get grease on your table and you don't clean the grease up with soap, you use water, and it still feels like that slick coating there. Well, that's like a biofilm in all your cells. And it makes it very difficult when we have a higher amount of bad bacteria in relationship to good bacteria, it's hard for us to kill it. Now the bad bacteria puts out toxins, it produces things called lipopolysaccharides. If we have fungus, it'll produce mycotoxins and endotoxins, things that actually are toxic to our body. They can create leaky gut, they can cross the blood-brain barrier, and they can even create mood disruptions, anxiety, depression, and who would have thought all that can come from your gut? And it also can disrupt digestion. If we have poor digestion, we can't break down proteins, fats, ionized minerals, and then all the things that we eat we can't reconstitute them into our body and into our energy system. So really important, if we have bad bacterial issues, we want to be able to kill the bacteria. And one of the biggest obstacles preventing us are going to be the biofilms. So that's what the biofilms are. Now how it works is biofilms attach and they're like this little protective kind of slimy coating. And this is kind of phase one here is they attach and then over time they start to grow. They start to accumulate here. And then here's where our biofilms are really difficult is they start to disperse. They'll start to travel and attach and adhere to other parts of the body. So they will disperse itself down the road. Now, we're, they're having issues even with biofilms affecting medical transplants, such as hips and knees and prosthetic devices. They're even using things like silver, silver coatings, like in colloidal silver, to help prevent and break down biofilms. Some of the research we'll go over here in a bit shows that silver can help break down biofilms 70 to 97 percent. See the references below for that study. So we really want to be able to affect biofilms because they can affect our guts, but they can also affect even conventional allopathic surgeries. Uh, there, there's a lot of research coming out over the last 15 years is becoming a big issue that biofilms are a big problem and they're trying to address it with um, these different things such as silver and even manuka honey for wound issues because these films are protecting the antibiotics from actually working. They're preventing the antibiotics from working. So biofilms in your thyroid. So we know gut bacteria has a major effect on our immune system. And most thyroid issues are autoimmune. So if we have our immune system attacking the thyroid gland, the gut bacteria, right, whether it's out of balance or in balance, can have a huge effect on our immune system. The more out of balance, the more beneficial bacteria we have that that's low in relationship to the high amount of bad stuff will throw our immune system out of whack and we can start attacking our thyroid tissue. Bad bacteria can also create more leaky gut 
can allow undigested food particles to slip through the gastrointestinal tight junctions in our intestinal tract, get into the bloodstream where our immune system is not used to seeing it and start creating a, a feeding frenzy, so to speak, and we get a case of mistaken identity because our immune system starts seeing proteins and particles that are in the bloodstream that typically aren't there. So it can create leaky gut, it can create more toxicity, it can then put stress on our immune system as well and skew out our Th1 and Th2 balance and it can create a, a, a issue where we're making more higher amounts of Th2 in our body and our immune system is starting to hyper respond to self tissue, autoimmune, self killing self. It can also affect receptor sites. When we have inflammation in the body, whether it's inflammation from endogenous toxins or inflammation from our body attacking self, that can block the receptor site. So imagine you're coming home from work, you put your key in the house, but there's the holes filled in. Someone put some silty putty in there. Well, now the key doesn't work, right? Think of the key as like the thyroid hormone. Think of the key hole as like the receptor site. So if we have something in there, whether it's inflammatory proteins, interleukins, um, antibodies, that's going to prevent that key or that hormone from locking into the receptor site and creating that metabolic effect that we want. It can also decrease T4 to T3 conversion because one of the big things in our gut is we have T3 acetic acid and T3 sulfate and we need this compound called sulfatase which is an enzyme produced by beneficial bacteria. And if we have low amounts of bad bacteria, and that's going to affect our sulfatase levels. Lower sulfatase means lower T4 to T3 conversion. So if T4 to T3 converts like this, and we need sulfatase here, right? And we have T3 acetic acid and T3 sulfate over here. We need this, and this is produced by beneficial bacteria. BB, and if we have more dysbiotic bacteria, so our beneficial bacteria is low, that's going to decrease sulfatase from happening, and that's going to decrease our T4 to T3 conversion from happening. And T3 is really our active thyroid hormone. So you can see, if we start to have bacterial issues, that's going to affect our thyroid. And most doctors, most thyroid specialists, they aren't looking at the gut being a root cause of their thyroid issue. Now on that note, we also know fungus, such as candida, and parasite infections also use uh, biofilms to help protect themselves. Yersinia is one of them, Yersinia enterocolitica, uh, candida, and other parasite infections will still use biofilms to protect themselves. Now that's important because we know things like blasto and H. pylori and candida can also affect our thyroid gland, affect our immune system, and also increase inflammation and affect our thyroid gland from working optimally. So again, it's good to look at the thyroid, it's good to look at thyroid support, but if we're ignoring the gut, then we're ignoring a big piece to the puzzle. And if we ignore the biofilm piece, that's a huge element that we need to overcome to be able to get the, the bad bacteria back into place. So again, we talked about the thyroid gland here and we talked about how it's affected by bad bacteria and how biofilms are gonna be a key thing affecting that. Let's talk about some natural biofilm treatments. One of the things I do in my clinic is we use ginger with all of my gut patients. Anyone that has a gut infection, we use ginger. Uh, Zingiber officinal is the medical term for it, or the uh, medicinal herb name for it, but ginger for short, everyone knows it by ginger. It's a natural biofilm disruptor. It's commonly used in the GAPS protocol as well. We actually put some honey in as well, like a wild clover or a, a raw type of honey. You can even use manuka honey, which is shown to be antibacterial and anti-biofilm as well. And we'll juice three or four cloves of ginger. I have a video on this where I'll put it in my Vitamix or your Magic Bullet, blend it up really nice, add some hot water to it, throw it in a French press, let it sit for three or four minutes, filter it out, squeeze a quarter of a lime and a little bit of honey in there, and boom, you've got a great drink that you can sip all day that will help keep things moving. It's a natural prokinetic, meaning it keeps your guts and your intestines moving. It's anti-inflammatory. It's anticoagulant, so it keeps cells from sticking to each other, so it keeps things flowing. And it's a biofilm disruptor. Lots of great studies on this. I'm going to post it below in the reference section. Take a look at it if you need. Silver, I already mentioned that. They're using this in hip surgeries today, knee surgeries, all kinds of different medical procedures, up to 97% reduction in biofilms. They're taking these sheaths of silver, almost like a cellophane sheath, and they're putting it over the area that was operated. Very helpful at preventing the biofilm formation and allowing whatever type of antimicrobial is being used, typically an antibiotic, to be able to work better. 
Artemisia is another one. I'll put a study down below where they used Artemisia and other, I think it was either Flagyl or Cipro. It was Cipro. And it, the Artemisia actually helped the Cipro work better. So even if you're conventional, conventionally minded here, these herbs are going to help the antibiotics work better. Now, one of the problems with the antibiotics is the efflux pumps. They don't, the efflux pumps essentially don't get inhibited. So the antibiotics gets pushed out of the cell back into the bloodstream because we are not addressing the efflux pump issue. That's a, a blog post I've already done last year. Take a look at my gut bacteria and efflux pumps. We'll post that in the video. So again, like I mentioned before, these herbs are going to help the efflux pumps, which are going to basically, the efflux pumps are basically, you're in a boat, the boat's taking on water, and you put the bilge pump on or you get your bucket and you start scooping the water from the boat back into the water. That's like an efflux pump. Just imagine the antibiotics as being the water. Now the problem is, if we want to sink the ship or sink that bacterial uh, component, we don't want the bilge pump or we don't want the person to pick up the bucket and start putting the, the water or the antibiotic in this analogy back out into the ocean. We want that boat to take on water so it sinks. We want that bacteria to take on the antimicrobials and sink. So the herbs tend to also have an effect at inhibiting efflux pumps. Okay, think of efflux pumps as your bilge pump or the someone taking that, that pail and bailing out the water. That's the efflux pump. Now we have NAC. This is actually a really cool amino acid compound. It's a sulfur-based amino acid used in phase two detoxification, which is how your body takes toxins and mobilizes it out of the body. It's a sulfur-based amino acid. It helps with glutathione levels, but it also helps take down these biofilms. It's like soap on a kind of liquidy, oily surface, and it helps clean that right off. So NAC is a really great biofilm buster. Honey, I already mentioned, we can even use that with the ginger tea recipe. See that video later on. Berberines are phenomenal. These are a family of herbs, to name a few. We have golden seal, we have barberry, we have berberine HCL, hydratus coptis, uh, Oregon grape, to name a few. And these are very antibacterial. These are also efflux pumps inhibitors. They work really good with artemisia together. Excellent. And they help break down a lot of these biofilms too. So when we create protocols to knock down these infections, we combine these herbs together. I have a high amount of berberines in one of my products called uh, GI Clear 1 and GI Clear 2. We also use cloves. Cloves are shown to be anti-biofilm as well. It has that nice little cinnamon smell to it, that Christmassy smell. Very good, very anti-biofilm. We put this in our GI Clear 2 product and the cloves help with the biofilms there. Anytime we deal with a gut issue, we typically always assume biofilms are present because it's going to allow us, the patients that haven't gut results in the past, it's going to allow us to work better with any gut issue that's there and help kill whatever needs to be eradicated. And then we also have enzymes and these are Enzymes taken on empty stomach a lot of times, whether it's serapeptidase or enteric-coated proteolytic enzymes to go in there and help break down the biofilms. And we'll even use some enzymes that have EDTA in it because sometimes these biofilms will, will take on minerals as a protective shield as well. They'll make up minerals as part of that biofilm plaque. And so sometimes enzymes with some chelators in there can be helpful to break down any of those biofilms. So in review, what are biofilms? They're this polymetric substance made out of protein and some sugar, okay? We're trying to allow the antimicrobials or antibiotics to work better. Biofilm are the protective shield that allow those things to not penetrate and not work well. Biofilms in your thyroid, we talked about how it decreases receptor sites. It affects thyroid conversion and it can increase leaky gut and autoimmunity. It can increase leaky gut and autoimmunity. Also prevents the pituitary from working well too. And I'll add one more thing here, just autoimmune, autoimmune thyroid. And that's Hashimoto's for short. And we'll put leaky gut. That's one of the main mechanisms that a lot of these thyroid issues come, come from. We talked about all the natural biofilm agents, ginger to silver to artemisia to NAC to honey, manuka to berberines to cloves and the various enzymes. Now, if you have a health issue right now and your gut's not getting better, your thyroid's not getting better, biofilms could be a component that needs to be addressed. 
So the next step is get some comprehensive stool analysis done, look at your gut, look at your adrenals, look at your hormonal system and your thyroid together, and then come up with a comprehensive plan. And if you need help doing that, click on screen or reach out below so you get access to some of my great information and also working with me one-on-one -on -one as well. Subscribe for more great videos coming your way. Thanks, this is Dr. J signing off.